Okay, my friends, as you know, dipole electron flood theory explains dark matter exactly for what it is. And it, it not only explains it, it shows it in the experimental evidence, which is, in my mind, undeniable. It's the same particle CERN, Fermilab, Lawrence Livermore, all of them. It's the same basic elemental particles, the muon and the electron neutrino. I've shown this many, many times. Now, which gives us dark matter, all right, and the weight that has been missing, they can't find, and it also explains gravity, explains very virtually all the isotopes and all that stuff. So now they say, oh, the new theory suggests we've been looking for dark matter all wrong. Well, yes, <laughs> that's correct. All right, every day it's a new story about dark matter. I've been posting mine every day as well. And here they are going through that a new study suggests dark matter, long thought to be completely invisible, might subtly tint light as it passes through regions filled with, these, with that elusive substance, dark matter. Well, what is that elusive substance? This is it right here. Everything that I have found is dipole in nature, and some of it is just globularly dipole. Most of it in a subatomic realm is exactly dipole. This is, there's some white substance, there's a bunch of glowing dark substance. This is where the dark matter is. Dipole, 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 dipoles, dipoles. You're going to have dark, and then you're going to have light. That's what dark matter is, is the dark part. And I can show it at the, at the atomic light level. This is out in space. All right, so this is, you know, what the, this is a new technique, I think. I'm working with a guy right now, Mason, and he's doing this. And as a matter of fact, we're going to be, he's going to be showing me his setup, how he sets up his telescope, how he, or all the, it, it's, I'm hoping it's going to be this week, and I'll probably report on that. But this is the kind of stuff he can see. Now, I think this was with the same sort of a, a, whatever he does, he's got some magic going on. Green laser light coming in, but you see dipoles? I mean, they're all dipoles if you know what to look for. See the dipoles down here, dipole, 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 everywhere. That green laser light coming through here, I don't know, I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't know how he did this, what he used, whether he used a Venturi, he just used the light, I have no idea. Whether that could be through water, for all I know. But here he is, another one. I, 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 I'm pretty sure it's coming this way. And again, I don't know anything, this is new. This is very new to me. And what is, what is he actually seeing here? But that appears to be the laser and it's starting to break up as it this could be water I don't know maybe some kind of I don't know I have no idea I I don't know what to say <laughs> all I can say is that looks like what is that CBS <laughs> there's a dipole there and he's got some he's got a he's got some tech going on but you see this stuff, look at that. They're all dipoles. You got black and white and black and white and black and white. And it started out really intense in the center and get less and less and less until it, at, it sort of ends at some point. Now all of this could very well still be associated to this initial push part. I don't know. I don't know. All right, dark matter makes up most of the universe. It makes up almost entirely everything. If you took a thousand pound battery and you added just the white matter, because that's what we got. We got dark matter and then we got white matter. Dark matter is your battery. That's your battery. It's dark matter. 
it wants to grab a hold of some white matter and the white matter has no mass to speak of at all. You have a thousand pound battery, which is the dark matter, and you push the white matter into it and it only gains 45 thousandths of a gram. It gains nothing. The white part has no mass. None to speak of. Here's another one just came in. Physicists achieve first entangled measurement of W states. Well, DFT, dipole electron flood theory. <laughs> they got some other name for it. But they're pushing particles together this way. We did it diff we did it basically similar but long ago. And this was um what they did was the team took advantage of the fact that different W states, which is the, the final particle, or I don't know, whatever wave state you want to call it, it took almost, look almost identical, but differ by tiny phase shift, which is, that's the color basically, which acts as a hidden label, distinguishes one state from another using a tool called a discrete Fourier transformer, that's DFT, which is actually means dipole electron flood theory. Research was able to decode this phase and tell the states apart. Well, we can do that too, only we can actually show you doing it. This is uh, like a little doodle about it, but I will show you the real thing. All right, so what's a W state? These are the first entangled W. That's just how fast the thing is spinning, basically. It's an entangled state between two different types of particles. They're forcing them to come together using lasers. The red and the blue and making green. Well, that's not too far off. We did it a better way. We made the we, blue is hard to work with. We did work with it, but it's very hard to work with. We used the green and the red together. To, to, and we can see them interacting with each other. They're trying to create a different state of, of frequency, basically, of what they're doing, which I don't think you can do that. Well, we did it, actually. We did do that. I can show that. Here's where we put the green and the red through at the same time through the same venturi. Just a tiny bit apart. And the red was just pushed away because it has no energy. You see how dill, dull, dill or blah, 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 how it has no real glow and that one there is just phew. Now it actually spun the particles this way. They don't they don't do not do that. That is not the way light works. It spins according to straight up and down, always this way. Even if it's going sideways, it still spins this way. It never goes that way. And it never, ever, ever goes like that, except that the green above was so powerful that its white field pushed the white field of the red ones and made them tumble. So now they could say said they could see them entangled. We can too. You see that? See the little red ones are stuck in with the green. You see it? And that I really don't fully understand. The green you can see uh, that's the photon phase of the green. The red is just the energetic part. It appears the glowy part. That's what it appears to me. Now, the green, if it didn't, if it wasn't obstructed by the red, it would look like this. You see it? That's power. And it, uh, once it comes through the Venturi, it just, bam, creates these huge showers of electrons. Absolutely a stunning number of electrons compared to what's coming through to begin with. This is an electron shower. And these are the green photons just squirting everywhere. And th this CMOS works very well to see these things. CERN upgraded to CMOS, and they're upgrading right now to, because the CMOS works so well. 
You see, this, this is CERN upgrading to CMOS for the high luminosity collider, but they have to put in hardened stuff because they still want to work with, with protons, it appears to me. We got it down to where we're just working with this. But they're using the same CMOS we're using in cell phones. You see that? This is just, they're just upgrading right now. I said, does CERN use cell phone CMOS to see particles? Yes, CERN and its affiliated researchers, everybody's using it now, have started using repurposed CMOS sensors, including those from commercial smartphones, which is what we used, to detect particles. It is not the standard technology for their main detectors. It is used for specific experiments where its strengths are a good fit, which means that it can't be destroyed. Well, they're hardening it now. For most of its research, CERN uses highly specialized purpose-built detectors that are far more complex than a cell phone can. However, the use of off-the-shelf CMOS sensors has several key advantages for certain applications. Yes, light. See, the, the, the particle colliders, the big guys, didn't think they could use CMOS. So they had to use charge couple devices. So CMOS is versus CCD, charge couple. For many years, CERN used pixel sensors based on charge couple devices to track particles. Charge coupling means that you are either pushing energy in and you are coupled, or you are sensing energy out coupled into the energy field. So you change the outcome of what's happening in there based on whether or what you're putting in or what you're taking out. They didn't they couldn't understand that. And they would call that the observer effect. They say it doesn't do that until you observe it. Well you're observing it by putting energy in or taking energy out. CMOS is totally different. CMOS it just sits back here. The light would have just gone past us and gone into who knows where. We're just sitting back here getting ch no charge coupling whatsoever. We're just being impacted by the light that's given off and from the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest energetic particles up to the most brilliant, but they are light. They're not big chunks like that. There are little things like that. So they say, oh, it works good for some of our stuff. Well, it work, it, it, CMOS is, is the best for everything, but they have to harden enough layers of insulation so that the big pieces don't get through. They get filtered out and you, and you get hit by the little ones. And, they, and they, I don't know if they can tell. They, we can tell everything because we started with light. We don't have to worry about all those big chunks. You know, I always talk about not doing much with the blue. It's, it's too fast to really work with. You can see that there's two particles only way out here. Over here, it looks it's so fast you can't even tell there's two particles. But it is spinning. It's spinning to the right, which means it drifts to the left as it slows down, which is what it's doing. Here, it's almost just so fast it doesn't even look like it's spinning. I mean, it looks like it's just one beam, but you can tell now that it's spinning, drifting to the left and separating, showing the two particles. Now, what else did we do with the blue? Well, this is through glass. And you see how stacked that blue is down there? That is just, I mean, it's like, like having red and have the red be like like way out here. And then the blue is like way down here. That's just And the red is just sort of dip, 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 going through there. A much, much different energetic reaction. Now, this you can see, see like a little bump there? It's pushing those particles out of the way. <laughs> and that's, uh, all of that little fuzzy stuff has to be something of some kind of a particle thing. You know, I, as far as I'm concerned, this, well, now that I'm thinking about it, this is a big beam. You, you don't think of it as a big beam. You think of it as a laser, little tiny thing. Well, a little tiny in this realm is big. So these, these are all little 
little tiny dipoles, I would guess. And you can see them, yeah, you actually you can see the corpuscular nature of them if you look close enough. You see them? I think I can see that. And there's a bump in the middle where it's just 100% glow. But you can see coming off of that bump in the middle. I think I can see little balls of white, which would be attached to little balls of black. Or maybe not. Maybe the balls of black are in that layer right there, that, that layer right there. And I maybe can see that too. I see, I, it's modeled looking, it's not like one, it's white, you follow me, in other words, it's not just one white stripe, there's some glowy little stuff going on in there, it, it, but again, blue is just very hard to deal with. Something to also remember, all light seems to carry this type of signature, these round, circular, bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark, and then dipoles somewhere. I mean the dipoles just are everywhere but I'm still learning. There's a lot to learn here. This is not something you just grab a hold of and you're done. And these are the particles and the only reason you can see that black is because it's on top of white or the good color that's behind it. Same as ours. Exact same thing. Behind it is red. You see over here it's white and black. Behind it is is energetic particles and in this case it happens to be the red particles because it was a red laser if it was green you'd have green surrounding the black and we do have that too and that's the only reason you can see the black because it doesn't emit absorb or reflect it can only obstruct getting away of the white coming past it and that's what's happening here you see the green same exact story you see that green? And the only way you can see that black is because the green is trying to come, green light is trying to come out and the black is on top of that green light obstructing it from coming out. Otherwise you wouldn't see the black. There's black all over here. It's everywhere. Alright, that's the photon. 